Hello everyone and welcome back to my first mon. I'm one of your hosts Jack Martin alongside the Pokemon master Christian Buckley. Hello Jack, we made it. We did, did we it. though? You did it. Well, okay, we did, we'll get to that, but yeah. congratulations. Well, Thank you very much. We're not much. there yet, we have to tell your journey, but mm -hmm. how's it feel? It feels good <laughs> in some regards. Uh -huh. um, made it through the end or what seems to be maybe the end of my second Pokemon game. Mm -hmm. Feels good. Uh, we're going to be getting into the Elite Four this episode for yes. the viewers and listeners out there. Um, so yeah, how, how has been your past week since we last recorded? Good stuff happening? Yeah, uh, I, we, we brought it up last week. The PS5 thing was underwhelming a little bit. Uh, mm. Despite the fact that I'm wearing a PlayStation shirt, I attempted to get an Xbox this week. That did not work. But um, other than that, you know, saw through the end of a Pokemon game. That's always fun. Um, and yeah, I'm ready to talk about it with you because there are things to discuss. So like, this has been something that's been pulling me through my week. I just really want to know your takes on the second Pokemon game finale. Definitely, definitely. And uh, we shall see what we think. But before that, if you don't know, I never played a Pokemon until last year where Christian guided me through Pokemon Blue while he played through Pokemon Red to jog his memory. For this season, we're both running through Pokemon Crystal, and each episode covers a particular gym. Uh, the show releases every Monday on podcast services like Apple Podcasts or Spotify. There's also a video version on YouTube. You can also you can get involved with the show by submitting fan art to myfirstmon at gmail.com. <laughs> I will admit, forgot to uh, assign one last episode, so apologies there, but we will remember to do that this episode. Mm -hmm. uh, you can re rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts. Leaving a five-star rating and a review helps us out a ton. You can also subscribe to JoyClicks on YouTube. We are getting very close to that 2,000 sub mark, so your support over there would be very great. Um, and you can also give us advice or corrections in the YouTube comments, and we may feature you in our Trainer Tips, tips segment, which we'll get to momentarily. Uh, but before that, you can also support us on patreon.com slash joyclicks. The $1 level will give you early access to episodes, so you'll get them on Saturdays instead of Mondays. Uh, the $2 level, you can name my Pokemon in my party. And at the $5 level, you'll get producer credit, like our Patreon producer, Chris Sakis. So thank you, Chris. Speaking of Chris, Chris Shin, <laughs> you want to give us some uh, trainer tips? Sure. First off, uh, as several people pointed out, um, I was wrong that last The Pokemon was... Master? Yeah, last week was Gym 8, and like in in the back of my head I knew that, but because we doubled up one week, and then I was always used to tying the episodes, the episode number to the gym number, mm -hmm. um, episode 7 of this show was actually Gym 8, so there was no other gym this week, it was just the Elite Four. <laughs> I thought that as well, because I uh -huh. was <laughs> I was going through like the very beginning of my playthrough, I was like, where the hell is this gym? <laughs> Turns out... I already had and I looked through my badges and I was like oh I have all eight and yeah, yeah it, it took me a bit to to realize because I was also under the impression that I had another gym left but uh yeah man I guess it was because like I was left with such like a sore impression from Claire being just like yeah <laughs> super like, like that's the last gym really this this, yeah. this trainer who won't even give up their badge like come on man like in hindsight that's extra bad <laughs> like why would you do that <laughs> for real um but getting into some specifics, Angarl, as always, is here with the typing of where we left off last week. For your current party, Jack, as of the end of last episode, Typhlosion is fire, Graveler is ground and rock, Victory Bell, grass and poison, Machoke is fighting, Suicune is water, not ice. So Angarl corrected mm. me on that. So did uh, Neon Rider in the Discord. Water, not ice. So again, the Vaporeon evolution that we went through kind of like the, the the tall tale of the evs who became the beasts like makes even more sense now because mm -hmm. before it was like um jolteon and flareon evolving to still electric and fire but why would vaporeon be ice so yeah that was that was my fault um da -da -da. and quagsire is ground and water uh we also have a take from Angarl that Crystal feels like more the definitive edition of Red and Blue. Gen 2 feels less like a follow-up, which I agree with, and that's kind of why I don't like it. <laughs> mm. 
I would have to agree with that. I don't dislike the game. It just kind of yeah. feels more of the same. Yeah. We'll certainly get to that yeah, we, <laughs> this episode. Um, Hopkey wanted to, to point out that a correction from a couple weeks ago was actually incorrect. Uh, red and blue, Golbat, does have the tongue hanging out. So I got the game wrong, but the sprite of Golbat with the gross tongue dripping, that, that is a thing that exists. Mm, that's unfortunate. Uh, <laughs> I forget that from our red and blue playthrough, but I guess that was there. Mm -hmm. um, there was also one thing that Neon Rider pointed out, I believe. Um... Oh, basically advising against the World Islands at this point. Uh, probably not a good idea, and I we'll get to that this episode as well. We sure but, will. Yeah, I think that's everything. Oh, uh, also Hound Hour evolves into Hound Doom at level 24, not level 50. That was my mistake. Okay, yeah, that would be... You would have to... If it was level 50, you'd have to be, like, a ride-or-die Hound Hour fan. Yeah, because you know? I think the reason I went that way is because it's, since it's a late-game Pokemon and it only has two evolutions, most of the time... This could be a trend. This could be me misremembering things. It feels like two evolution Pokemon and late game Pokemon evolve at a very high level. So mm -hmm. I think that might have just been an assumption, but apparently not. And uh, yeah, it's just more bad placement of new Pokemon. Yeah. So. Oh, well. Uh, well, oh, uh, yeah, go for it. Juggernaut also wanted to throw in there that you're able to get a Dratini with the move Extreme Speed from the Dragon Masters in the Dragon House Den, if you were curious about getting that with the move so like i do they mean i could get both um over there is that what they were saying so it's you will be gifted a dratini that knows that move oh oh okay i see i see mm -hmm. cool cool appreciate that yeah appreciate all our trainers out there giving us some some tips and some yeah. even some hot takes this episode yeah and girl i agree with you so mm -hmm. And we're going to probably get to that talking point later today. But uh, as always, thank you for improving the show every week. Uh, clearly, I don't know everything about Pokemon, despite being the titled Pokemon Master. But um, <laughs> yeah, thanks for following along. Always appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate you. Uh, and girl, I probably also agree. Maybe not mm -hmm. to the extent, but I'm with you on that line of thinking. So speaking of Angarl, let's hit them with our current party, Christian. Please do. We got Suicune, who is a level 41. Mm -hmm. We got Victory Bell, who's a level 36. Typhlosion, level 38. Graveler, level 34. Muscle's a level 30. A little bit de-leveled than the rest, but still in the party. And we got a Quagsire at level 32. Very nice. And immediately, Professor Elm calls me. Mm -hmm. um, and asks me to visit the lab. Um, there's a whole lot of stuff that I do before we even get to the end of this episode. I'm just going to skip that because, like, it doesn't even come into play. So my party is, like, shifting in and out. I'll give you an updated um, party before I start the Elite Four, Christian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just for the edit. Sure. Um, yeah, because we've got to know what that champion team looks like. Yeah, yeah, totally. So. We get to New Bark Town. Uh, Elm gives me a Master Ball, so I'll keep that... <laughs> I know what to do with that now. So mm -hmm. I'll keep that in the old inventory and not use it until I need to. I, like, accidentally... I noticed water, Christian, to the right of the screen mm -hmm. in New Elmtown... Or, excuse me, New Barktown? New Elmtown? New Barktown, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I can surf that thing now. So I guess I'll try. Immediately go over. And then there's this gentleman there who's like, Do you know what you just did? You just swam into Kanto. I'm like, what? Did I just travel international waters? <laughs> um, but yeah, I swam into Kanto. I checked my town map and I was like, oh boy, that's the whole game. That's the whole blue right there. Mm -hmm. Is this the spoiler? Yeah. Damn. All of Pokemon Red and Blue's Kanto... Mm -hmm. is on the cartridge for gold, silver, and crystal. That is wild. Right? Like, at first I was like, slightly underwhelmed. Sh sure. Slightly. Because my line of thinking went with Johnny, and I was kind of expecting that. I guess we haven't even... We'll get there, I guess. But 
That was sort of my line of thinking. Did not expect the whole first game's map, considering that this is a really old game. Yeah. And cartridges, like, with memory and stuff, seems same like that system. would be a lot. And it's the same system, yeah. So, man, honestly, it's it's kind of wild to think about. Right? Like, if you're a fan of Red and Blue, mm -hmm. here's my line of thinking. If you're a fan of Red and Blue, Crystal may be the game to play? Because... It's essentially like a, you can sort of operate it as like maybe a new game plus in a way. Because, yeah. mm -hmm. well, I, I guess like you have to go through the first eight gyms in Johto. Mm -hmm. And then presumably, I haven't gotten to this yet, but then presumably you can just go through Kanto and do those eight gyms with, albeit, yes, a different party. But yeah. still, that's like a different way to experience the first game, like with a fresh set of eyes. Pretty much. So basically the way it works is I think if you do it from New Barktown, it's just like a little tease. It's like, oh, hey, you're close to Kanto. But yeah. once you become the champion, you'll be gifted a ticket that you can uh, use to. I don't know if you can, if you board the SSN, but you board a boat. Yeah, it's the and, S the SS ticket, I think, or whatever. Okay, it was. so you use that ticket. I forget where in the, the map, but it's you in olivine i think okay Maybe. so yeah you ho you hop on the boat there and then you go to where the ssn was docked in red and blue mm. which is lieutenant surge's town which i mm -hmm. think was vermilion <laughs> i think <laughs> um we'll never know no we won't um and then from there you can just play through all a gyms and the elite four again hmm and the thing is, you're mm. still Jack from New Barktown. Yeah. So things have changed since then, right? Yeah. Like, there's... Things have happened. Two years, right? Two or three years have passed since uh, Jack and Ash ran through right. that world. So, like, there's implications there, you know? Mm -hmm. You can still get um, a bunch of Pokemon from Red and Blue that you maybe you haven't found in Johto yet, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, they managed to get the entirety of Kanto on the same cartridge as an entire new region. That's insane. Now, right? I gotta ask you, mm -hmm. when this game came out, yes, was this the big secret? And were people, like, blown away by this back in the early 2000s? So, I, I can't speak to it on a personal level like that, but I believe the conversation is that's crystal's legacy in a way or like mm -hmm. gen 2's legacy almost where um i, I believe the the person they cite there's a really interesting story behind it i like uh satoru awada who was the ceo of nintendo who passed away a few years ago um he was responsible for making that cartridge work like making kanto fit onto a game boy cartridge with an entire new pokemon game hmm. and I don't know if that was like a schoolyard tale of like, oh, if you beat the game, you can go back to Kanto. Like, I don't know if that was a thing. I don't know if that was in marketing, but it is definitely a pillar of Gen 2's legacy. Absolutely, that you can go back to Kanto. Yeah, I guess as a player with, with fresh eyes in the year 2020, mm -hmm. at first I was underwhelmed because I'm like, oh, whatever. But like when I was thinking about it, I was like, wow, they really crammed in essentially two games <laughs> Yeah. into one game boy cartridge mm -hmm. that's super impressive right because I, I was thinking about this too think about the conversations we had for season one of my first mod where it was just like wow this is kind of an open world at a certain point in the game you can go anywhere it's a huge map mm -hmm. to explore tons of dungeons tons of random encounters tons of pokemon like on a game boy game that was impressive and then this game comes around on the same hardware has both of them in there and at a certain point opens up even more in terms of like what gyms you want to hit in what order right like there's so much more it feels grander but to me uh i i think that hurts it in a way in terms of what i love about new pokemon generations where there's always something new this was like hey we're gonna make a familiar sequel and then bring in all the old as well i think that's where i fall on it now, 
to satiate the fans listening yes we should have this conversation right now i think sure what are we doing with this show Mm -hmm. considering that we now have the region of kanto to explore we so should we go week by week again should we should we go gym by gym just add eight more episodes to the to the tail end of this thing what should we do so here's the thing from memory i think you can get through kanto faster in crystal than he did in red and blue mm-hmm. so this is basically it's your call like there are we could take an approach and we could have this conversation even further later but like we could do two gyms a week if it's a, a faster thing if mm-hmm. we feel like you don't want to spend too much time exploring a region you've already explored um we could just not do it because <laughs> uh that's completely fine there's some cool story stuff you get but like there there's one major thing like one major thing that i think you would think is pretty cool but you have to get through all of kanto to do it is it related to johnny no it's not related to johnny does johnny lore that i'm going to be giving you this episode that you don't learn in that okay do we see johnny again after this I don't know. I don't remember, honestly. I really mm-hmm. don't. I was... We can get to this. I was a little disappointed. A little mm-hmm. disappointed. Um, okay. Because he, he, here's here's the thing. Because, again, I know listeners in the audience might really want to see you do this specific thing. But I, I empathize with you in that going through Kanto again in, like, the same way, almost. Like, it's still yeah. a Game Boy version of Kanto. Like... It's not as exciting as if we took a couple weeks and then started Emeralds, right? And then you just get to see it. The, the Game of the Year version of the first Game Boy Advance Pokemon game that has color and so much more detail and everything's new. Like, it's it's a matter of what you want to do. We can see what the audience wants as well. If, if that's what you want to do, like, where's your head at? I think I can... I usually start my play sessions around when this when the episode goes up Mm -hmm. so i can wait a day or so and see what people think sure i guess that's a good question to ask the audience like what would you want if you want me to go do eight again if you want me to do week by week like what we've been doing and just tack on an extra eight episodes then i'm down for that um if you all would rather have us do two gyms a week like what christian was saying or some sort of hybrid so we're thinking about hopping into Emerald at some point so we can get there quicker. If that's what you guys um, want us to do, we can definitely take that approach. Um, mm. I'd say, I think maybe I'll start week by week um, if I don't get that feedback right away. Sure. And then we can go from there. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we could, it, could all, it could be a moving sort of target. And yeah. if we get some feedback where people want us to not rush through it, but go at a faster pace we could definitely do that if they mm-hmm. like the week by week we can also do that too i think we're yeah. pretty flexible because even if we don't have a definitive answer by the next episode because like even if we didn't do all eight I-, I was still gonna say we should probably have like a post episode to say like the stuff you missed like talk about the world islands a little more like that kind of thing yeah um so there was always going to be an episode next week no matter what um so we can see what happens and depending on the feedback like play it by year so we can we can we can be loose with it sure before that christian we got a edition of who's that pokemon Ooh, okay i sent it over to you what do we think this thing is i ran out of space to put it it is a quillfish correct what do you Um, think of that looks cool it looks generic pokemon can i say that without offending people sure yeah because like, like it a looks puffer, like it's a puffer fish yeah <laughs> it looks like like i see a lot of <laughs> rotund pokemon that look kind of look like that fair point so didn't like blow me away but still fun to look at blow you uh, away it's a blowfish <laughs> well done well done well done Thank you. <laughs> now basically i'm moving through kanto to get to the elite four mm-hmm um, nothing is super interesting that's happening. I'm basically just fighting a bunch of trainers. Yeah. Um, I get to Victory Road. I believe, from my recollection, this g- gave me some difficulty. 
in Gen 1. Maybe I'm mm -hmm. wrong about that. Victory Road is pretty tough in Gen 1 specifically, yeah. Like, for your yeah. first time, then yes, you've probably had difficulty. Even this time, I put, like, super repels on, and I was still, like, running into wild Pokemon and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of annoying. But I get through it relatively quickly, but I do encounter Johnny for the last time. Yes. Um... Oh, we should have... <laughs> I should have started this at the beginning of the episode. We may have the footage of my Elite Four playthrough just throughout the entire episode. Just mm -hmm. because I, it took me an hour to get through it. So, for the sake of not cutting it down, we might just have it rolling through throughout the whole episode. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll make a little note in the video too. So. Okay, th that being said, we <laughs> also might cut it. This will be like a decision yeah. we make in uh, after the recording of this. So, just so you all know... Um, so yeah, we run encounter Johnny. He has a Sneasel, uh, a Fur Alligator, a Golbat, a Kadabra, uh, a Magneton, and a Haunter. Um, I'm saying that because I usually we usually put in the recording of my Johnny fights, but it wasn't anything special. Mm -hmm. uh, we get through him, we defeat him, and that's the last we see of Johnny. Okay. And I, I was a little disappointed. Maybe okay. I was putting my maybe my expectations of the spoiler was in Johnny, and maybe that was unfair of me to do. Um, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. This there's some Johnny lore we can talk about. Now, Please, let's do it. Okay, I'm I'm checking one last time to make sure that this isn't divulged in this generation. I don't think it is. Okay. So. Johnny does have a tie to Red and Blue. Okay. Now, for weeks, you speculated maybe it was Ash, also known as Gary or Blue, the rival of Gen 1. Uh, you also supplied the idea that maybe it's Red, the protagonist of Red and Blue. Mm -hmm. What if I told you, Jack, that I think in the remake of Red and Blue... Fire Red and Leaf Green on the Game Boy Advance. Mm -hmm. It is alluded to that Johnny is actually the son of Giovanni. Really? Yes. Huh. Why didn't they say that? <laughs> I don't know. I really don't. Because here's the thing. The canon name for your rival is Silver in this game. Okay. That's weird. I will. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say that's weird because it's the second time this has happened. Mm -hmm. Because red was the rival, right in Gen One. Blue, and now, blue was. Excuse me. Yeah, blue was. Um, I was red. That's weird. Why do they like make that decision? Like it seems like. Like if I was if I was playing the blue version, which I did. It would seem that, like, I was playing the bad version? Like, do you understand my logic there? Because, like, the your rival is that yeah. game's name? Like, that's that's an odd choice. I wonder why they did that. Do you have any facts on that? I or think it's just that? because there's a Pokemon manga that also exists that runs through the generations as well, and the character in the manga is always based on the protagonist and rival of the game, so they need a name. Mm-hmm. Um, like Gen two, the protagonist Jack this time, uh, his name is Ethan. Ethan. <laughs> yeah. What? I don't know. I don't okay. know. Interesting. But but yeah. So continue. Yeah. But yeah, Silver is the son of Giovanni. So does that mm -hmm. make sense now? Like the anger, the hatred, the maybe he was neglected as a child. Like are things starting to connect? Yeah, that's that's more logical than maybe my line of thinking. Um, I guess I was also coming at it from a 2020 video games perspective where <laughs> the decisions in for storytelling is a little bit more refined, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, there's some more nuance to some of the decisions being made nowadays. But yeah, that's interesting. Um, mm -hmm. I'm glad that Johnny did at least have a tie to the original because it seemed that way. I don't know why it did. Yeah, well, early on, like, his first time he encounters you, he talks about Team Rocket, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, you would think, right, maybe there's some tie, and if he's hunting down Team Rocket, maybe he's trying to, like, find his dad so he can 
get some revenge or something. I don't know. I feel like we haven't seen the last of Giovanni. Um. Yeah. He, yeah. 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 Okay. Not in this game, like, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So he's he's training this game as we realize. Yeah. He's right. Yeah, that was private gym. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was the last time we see Johnny in this game, presumably. I mean, maybe we see him in Kanto. I guess we'll find out. But before credits rolled, that was the last time we saw him. Which was kind of a letdown. I was kind of expecting, like, a big reveal. So I wish they did include that. He mm -hmm. was Gian Giovanni's son. That would have actually blown my mind while playing it. Yeah, well, oh. now you know. You gotta read the, the manga. Manga, yeah. sorry. I said that like an <laughs> American. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I feel like that was a bit of a missed opportunity, personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, well. I, I was surprised when I, because a couple weeks ago, I think two episodes back, we were talking about Silver, mm -hmm. and, or Johnny, sorry, and then, like, I was, like, looking something up, because I was trying to be like, did they reveal it in this game? And, uh, yeah, apparently not. I thought they mm -hmm. did. But. That's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. Um, I will mention briefly the World Islands. Okay. I probably spent like an hour there, Christian. Really? <laughs> Looking for the legendary Pokemon there. Mm -hmm. To a certain point, I get so frustrated, I look up a video guide because I know I'm already past the big spoiler. Mm -hmm. And I do everything it tells me to to get to this legendary Pokemon. It's not there. It is not there. Okay. <laughs> I might be misremembering something, but potentially... Remember how to get Mewtwo, you had to be the champion? Mm hmm. That might be a similar scenario here. Yeah, I think I needed to have something or to be someone. Yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah, I, I think that's the case. Honestly, even if you did, you would have been super under level, because it is the highest level wild Pokemon encounter you'll find in the game. Yeah, I was prepared to just throw out Bellsprout, throw a Sleep Powder, hopefully, and then do my thing. Mm hmm but couldn't do that. No. So whatever, World Islands, you're not worth it. <laughs> maybe maybe later I'll, I'll go back, but oh, it's just such a process to even get there, dude. Like, I can't yeah. fast travel there. I have to surf. Oh, boy. Anyways, it's not great. It's not. The, to, granted, though, the from memory in the remake, Soul Silver, pretty easy process compared to this. Hmm. So. Isn't it always? The newer ones make it easier. Mm-hmm. That's why that's why our generation grew up with these crazy video games back in the day, and mm -hmm. now we know how to do certain exploits and stuff in games. Yeah, I was doing the Ogma Infidium glitch back in Skyrim, <laughs> getting a level eighty-one. Come on. Anyways, yeah. yep. Were you doing that as well? No, I was gonna say my friend booted it up yesterday to do like the dagger spamming for maxing oh, out smithing. Oh man, dude, Sorry. I would plow away at the the, the <laughs> with the old smithy. And yeah. uh, buy some iron ore and ingots from White Run mm -hmm. and all that. Oh man, good times, good times. But this is not the Skyrim podcast. No. Maybe one day. Regardless, we get to the Inigo Plateau. We are here. Here's the party. We got Typhlosion. We got Graveler. We got Quagsire. We got Victory Bell. We got Muscle, and we got Suicune. Nice. This is for the Elite Four. I am putting in. This is this is the starter. This is my basketball team starter, right? Like, mm -hmm. this is the championship, and and we need to have everyone on court. Yes. So, that's the extent of my basketball uh, <laughs> analogy. Yeah. Uh, at this point, I'm buying a lot of stuff, and okay. unlike last time, I'm not buying any pokeballs. <laughs> right. I I still can't believe that was a thing. Yeah, I guess my brain like didn't put two and two together, um, Gen One, because I was like, oh, I guess I'll be. I assumed I would be going through like a victory road situation, like between to, like, each gym leader, or yeah, between each lead four member. That's what I thought. I because gotcha. obviously it was my first experience, so I didn't yeah, realize it'd it's be a fair a back -back. assumption. It's fair. Yeah, and like, why would they sell those there? I don't know. <laughs> to confuse me, clearly, and it worked. Yeah. But here we go. Will is the first elite four member. Will throws out a Zatu. Mm -hmm. I got Typhlosion as number one. Okay. I use my Flame Wheel. Zatu uses a Psychic. I'm throwing back a Flame Wheel. Zatu's using Confuse Ray. Um, and then he's using Psychic. 
I use a full restore. At this point, I am confused. And then I throw in a quick attack, and it faints. So that one, not a big issue. Slowbro comes in. I throw out Weeping Bell. Throw some Sleep Powder on it. Acid a bunch of times. And that faints. No real issue again. Mm -hmm. Jinx comes to party. Oof. Yes. <laughs> Jinx presents some issues. Um, I throw out Graveler. And I get hit with Ice Punch. Yeah, that wasn't a good call. Immediately go down. <laughs> what was... Yeah. What, so what is what is Jinx, do you recall? Jinx is Ice. And so Ice she might... is strong against ground? I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ice might... Jinx might be Ice Psychic, I don't know, but de it can definitely learn Ice moves. So yeah, mm -hmm. Ice against ground is not a good time. Yeah. Yeah, Todoroki came out and was fighting Sero <laughs> in the tournament and just blew up the stadium with Ice. That's what happened. Yeah. Uh-huh. Anyways, um, I throw out Victory Bell, also get one hit, so that ain't good. I throw out Suicune, and then I was like, this isn't doing much. I think it was probably the Ice versus Ice situation, because yeah. for Suicune, yes, Suicune is water, but I'm mostly using Suicune with its Ice attack that I currently mm -hmm. have. Uh, but I throw out Typhlosion, um, and I use Flame Wheel, and we get the gem done. Very nice. So there's that. Then we got Zat another Zatu. Psychic, I use Quick Attack. Flame Wheel with Typhlosion uses Confuse Ray. I use a full heal because I'm confused at this point, but um, Zot or Will uses a max, max Potion, which, come on. Yeah, that's Let's be professional. Insulting. Yeah. Now, do you feel any differently about Zatu than you did about Natu? So Zatu must be the second or third evolution? Zatu is... Zatu and Natu are the only two. The Zatu stage i see um let me look up zatu real quick because i do somewhat uh misremember oh okay <laughs> looks like a very studious bird <laughs> i ended looks... up getting a zatu on the team on mine it looks better than Natu, i will say mm -hmm. so yeah that's all well and good nice but yeah um it's using psychic against me a bunch and i'm using like lemonades and Eventually, I'm using flame, flame Wheel for the final time. It's not dead, but it's very close to low health. Mm -hmm. And it receives some burning damage, so it uses Psychic against me, but then it dies from its burns. So that's good. Uh, and then Rest. Executor is the last one. Mm. Executor is a favorite of mine from Ooh. recent years. Big fan. E Executor being a Psychic type? Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. Grass Psychic. So again, cool typing. Terrific. That's... That's a type that I don't have on my party. Really? Mm-hmm. Am I missing out? What, grass or psychic? Psychic. Psychic is strong, dude. Like, mm -hmm. strike, psychic is very strong. Like, you can never go wrong having a psychic type, ever. Yeah. I don't think I've ever messed with a psychic type. Uh, Slowpoke is psychic. Mm -hmm. um, Jigglypuff can learn psychic moves, so can Snorlax. Um, I don't know if they get half typing eventually. I don't remember. Uh, I think Clefable might be psychic. I had a Clefable on my team by the end of it as well. So like, Clefable can at least learn psychic moves. So that's between that and Zatu, I was bouncing around there. But yeah, yeah, good. So yeah, Executor comes out, uses psychic. I have to use another full restore. Um, and then we basically switch off between psychic and fl uh, flame wheel, psychic and flame wheel eventually goes down nice um but yeah i think this elite four member fainted a few of my pokemon in the fray so already i'm like oh man I'm, i have to use um a lot of full restores a lot of different healing items and eventually like before i move on to the next uh elite four member i'm healing and reviving all of my pokemon to prepare sure for. so yeah um that was a Mm, I would say that was one of the tougher ones that I encountered. Uh, out of the four? A, or? I, I think so, yeah. I would say so. Yeah. Out of the four, yeah. Yeah, like, Psychic is a hard thing to counter, mm. I think. Like, Psychic, again, falls into that typing trio between, like, Psychic, Dark, and Ghost, where it's like, what? Okay, so what's strong against what? Like, so I get that. I, I think that's a fair thing to be stuck on, honestly. Yeah. 
Uh, then we get to Koga. Do you remember what type of Pokemon Koga uses? Uh, I believe Koga is poison because Koga was a gym leader in Red and Blue. Mm, which gym? The we it talked about him I think a couple weeks ago. The the ninja guy that was oh, like right. quack, 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 like that's what yeah. was his okay his, uh, intro was. Okay, so I did remember. I remember like this playthrough. Like he seemed familiar. I thought he was a uh, former Elite Four member from the um, previous generation. But yeah, I guess you're right. It was the he was a gym leader. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's cool. Uh, throws out a Ariados. Ariados. Arios, yes, a spider. Okay. Um, I believe I th you remember uh, early on there was that spider. Oh, Spinarak? Spinarak? I hate Spinarak. Is that Yeah, the Arios evolved? is the evolved form. So. Gross. Anyways, throw out Graveler. I use Dig. <laughs> it uses Giga Drain, and I think it hits me. It gets me in one hit, so. Nice. Um, but then I throw a Typhlosion, and I use Flame Wheel, and I hit it with one hit, and it faints. Nice so, dude. that was cool. Um, and then Fortress comes out. Also yes. hit this with Flame Wheel with one hit. And it faints. So, have you found a Pineco yet? No, I don't think so. So, yeah, Fortress is the evolved form Pineco. Pineco is a Pinecone. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So, yeah, that, those are two super easy ones, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, then Muck comes out. Oof. Yeah, I use Weeping Bell. Or at okay. least I tried to. Um, Sleep Powder does not work. Mm -hmm. And then it sludge bombs me. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> Back to Typhlosion. Sludge Bomb, Flame Wheel, Quick Attack, twice. Toxic. We're basically just like running back and forth. Uses Minimize, which I always think is annoying. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Again, similar to using a full restore, that is rough. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm using Quick Attack, it's using Toxic, Sludge Bomb. I eventually have to throw out Suicune. Um, and then I'm basically just like swapping through. I'm like, oh man, this Suicune's not working. Throw out Quagsire. Um, eventually Quagsire works. It uses Sludge Bomb against me. I use Earthquake, which it does. I think it does a significant amount Hell yeah, uh, of should. damage. Yeah. And then use the Sludge Bomb again, but then I finish it off with a Headbutt and it faints. Nice. So that's good. Moving on. Venomoth comes out. Okay. I use a full restore for Typhlosion. Um, Ember brings it down to half health, which is nice. And then Ember finishes it off. So that's a two-hit Pokemon right there. Pretty good, if I do say so myself. Yeah, that's pretty good. Because, again, I, I, well, you didn't really experience this in uh, Red and Blue, but as a Charizard main or Charmander, um, the first area, remember the the forest in Red and Blue where it's all mm -hmm. the bug trainers? Right. Charmander burns through all of them. So, like, oh, yeah. yeah. A fire on bug is a very good call. Good call. Yeah, seriously. Uh, and then Crobat is the final Pokemon. Oh, yeah. So you see Crobat now. Mm hmm. Unfortunately. Crobat's the, like, a super evolved version of Zubat. Yes. Gross. Um, uses a double team, which okay. it I think that like increases its invasion evasion, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, difficult. Anyways, using flame wheel with typhlosion, uses wing attack, and using ember. Uh, I give a hyper potion to Suicune, and okay. I pull out Suicune. Um, I use Aurora Beam a couple times. It's using wing attack. We're basically swapping off between my gust and its wing attack, and then eventually I defeat Crobat. So that's Koga. Done. Very defeated. Nice. Heal my Pokemon. So, yeah. yeah, so you're like pulling your weight. You're doing pretty good so far. Like, I know you said you had some trouble with Will, but mm -hmm. like, halfway already. That's that's solid. Yeah, this the first two, compared to the first two in Gen 1, were somewhat easier. Right? Like, And okay. I think it comes down to having a better leveled party yes i think that's key mm -hmm. i think that is very important and um yeah like uh on my end um i ended up really only having four 
like level 38 to 40 Pokemon, and then the others were like low 30s. So, in my time in the Elite Four, the the four big boys were the ones that were pulling most of the weight. So, like, it really does come down to, in at least these early games, I think, having a well balanced team and knowing the typing advantages. And honestly, like, that's, I think, one of the best decisions you made on the playthrough early on, of just, like, wanting to make sure everybody's getting their share, so mm -hmm. it's paying off. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely glad I uh, I did that, compared to mm -hmm. last go-through. Um, but yeah, then we run into Bruno, who, now that I say Bruno's name, is that a former gym leader as well, from Gen 1? I think they might be, because uh, Blair was the fire gym leader in uh, Red and Blue on mm -hmm. Cinnabar Island. Uh... But yeah, let me look this up. You, yeah, you can keep uh, running through and then I'll, I'll check this out. Okay. So Bruno is the fighting... Oh, you know what? Now that I say that, he's throwing out fighting Pokemon. Was Bruno at the city where Giovanni was? Celadon, I think. Yeah, okay. So I think... Mm, wait, I Celadon think... was... No, 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 sorry. Saffron. It's... Yeah, Saffron is the middle... Mm -hmm. Um, it's I, I did it out of order, right? Like I got a different badge because I didn't hit up Saffron. That's the one I'm thinking of, right? Where there's two gyms. Uh, okay, so according to Bulbapedia, Bruno was in the Elite Four in Red and Blue, so okay. that's where you're from. Okay. Well, Bruno's probably mad that he's still in the Elite Four, not the champion. Mm -hmm. Wait, here's a question. Yeah. The Elite Four are all like on the same sort of level, right? Yeah. How can they progress to be the Pokemon champion? I don't know necessarily. I don't think they ever do. I think, hmm. yeah, I think the champion is a separate entity. So, hmm, because you have to beat them to become the champion. Right. What does that make them? Like the, the champion's lieutenants? <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Now that I'm thinking about that, this just seems odd. Yeah. And I can already correct this right now. Uh, Kanto and Johto share an Elite Four in this game. So, so they're all the same. Yes. Yeah, so if you went through all the gyms in Kanto again, you would be fighting the same Elite Four. Hmm. But wouldn't I already be champion? Yes. Hmm. I don't know if he would just, like, prestige or something. Like, I don't know. It seems like a big prestige, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, maybe... Okay, the trainers out there should let us know, because now that I'm thinking about that, it that just that setup just strikes me as strange. Mm-hmm. Because, like, wouldn't they want to be the champion? Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Maybe they're just, they're just chilling. Maybe they don't care. Yeah, maybe. Anyways. Um, Bruno throws out a Hitmon top. Okay. Uh, so, fighting Pokemon here. Another I baby. What's that? Oh, is that the baby, baby Pokemon? Pokemon? Yep. Him on top, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I throw at Suicune. It uses Dig. And I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> when that's used against me, I don't like that. Yeah. I'm using Gust. It uses Dig. I use Bubble Beam twice, and then it faints, finally. So, nice. no real issue. But, yeah, the Dig was bothersome to have it used against me. It is so, quite OP. For the future, if I think this works. You know how there's certain attacks that will still hit if a Pokemon uses Fly and they mm -hmm. go up in the air? Um, I believe if a Pokemon uses Dig against you, you can use Earthquake, so that way it'll still ah. attack them, I think. Interesting. That would make sense. So. Hmm. That's cool. Mm -hmm. uh, then it throws out Hitman, Hitman Chan. Mm-hmm. Um, I use Suicune using Gust, using Aurora Beam. It uses Thunder Punch a few times. Then I use Bubble Beam like three times, and then it faints. So again, no real issue. Maybe I'm throwing some Lemonades and some healing items here and there, but not significant enough to write down, apparently. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, those two done. Hitmon Lee shows up to party. So we have all of the Hitmons, I would assume. Yes, so Hitmon top... Being a baby Pokemon is now a baby form that you can evolve into either Hitmonlee or Hitmonchan. Whoa, wait, you have the option? I think so... Oh, my mistake. Okay, Hitmontop 
is not the baby Pokemon. Tyrogue is the baby Pokemon, which evolves into Hitmontop, and then it's one of the other, I think. Interesting. That's. I yeah. feel like that's the first Pokemon where you have the option of a third evolution. Yeah, there are certain other ones. Like, remember uh, when you had a Poliwag on your team? One yeah. of the trainers wrote in and said that if you wanted to get a different version that would be ground and water, you could get Politoed, which is mm. uh, maneuvering around to make it evolve into something else rather than Poliwhirl. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, so there... That's cool. Tyrogue is another version of that, I think. Okay. Um, so, uh, it throws out Hitmonlee. I throw out Victory Bell. Use a Swagger. I'm confused. So I throw out a full heal. Uh, but I use Acid once, and then it does half damage to its health, and then I do it again, and it faints. Dude, Acid is such a great attack. Acid is, like, low-key pretty good. And, like, you have a lot of, um, PP associated with it as well. Yeah, surprisingly. So, that's nice. Um, and hey. Okay, Machamp is the penultimate, um... Bruno Pokemon. Mm -hmm. And I use Sleep Powder. But it hits me with some move before that I think does half damage to my health. And I'm like, oh boy. Uh, I use Acid like three times before it wakes up. Um, and then <laughs> uh, Bruno gives Max Potion. And I'm like, oh boy. And then it wakes up. And I'm like, oh geez. I use Acid twice again. He uses Cross Chop. Eventually I'm either low health, health or fainted. So I switch to Typhlosion. <laughs> and then it uses cross chop, but then I use quick attack to get it to faint. Very nice. So that's my champ. Done and away with. Finally, Onyx comes out, which is interesting. Is Onyx ground and or rock and fighting? No. Like, I wonder why Onyx comes out. I don't I don't know. I like can't tell you why. That's an odd choice, I feel. Yeah. Oh well. Um I bring out Quagsire. <laughs> Is that a bad move? I think that's a good call. You got water. Okay. Water, but it's also ground. But would my water in Quagsire negate the ground weakness? Or excuse me, would my ground in Quagsire negate the ground damage? You know what I mean? I don't think so. Because if oh, you're using a water attack, it'd still yeah. hit as a water attack. Okay. Yeah, because ground doesn't have any... Yeah, okay. Ground has no effect against... Uh, water or not any great effect now that I'm thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Never mind. Strike it from the record. Not okay. really. Um, so, yeah, I bring Quagsire out. Uses Bind. <laughs> and I answer my own question here. I should have referred to my notes a little bit earlier. I use Surf and it's a one hit attack. So, <laughs> Quagsire was a good move. <laughs> yeah, see, that was a good call. And honestly, yeah. I'm very impressed that you're just breezing through this thing. Yeah, I. We run into some more issues going through the next two. So, I heal all my Pokemon, and I don't even think I need to revive them. But if I do, I do revive them. Karen comes out. Oh boy, does your age, do your name not age very well. <laughs> um, What's Karen's typing, Jack? Dark. <laughs> Which makes so much sense. I know. Given the climate of Karens these days. <laughs> um, man. You know what's funny? Remember John and Kate plus eight? Yeah. Why? <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's my line of thinking. Kate from John and Kate plus eight is Definitely. like the po yeah, is the poster child for Karens. Yeah. So why isn't it Kate's? Why is it Karens? I don't know. It's my really Kate don't. Karen diatribe. Yeah, cause it's funny you say that, because whenever I think I hear Karen, I think of Kate from John and Kate Plus 8. <laughs> the haircut, like, everything about yeah. Kate from John and Kate Plus 8 is just yeah. screams Karen. But oh well. So I what will does say, Karen throw out? Uh, she throws out an Umbreon. I was about to say I used to hate watch John and Kate Plus 8 when my mom used to watch it on TLC. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless, um, throws out an Umbreon first. Mm -hmm. And... I don't think I have... I'm going to look up the typing here. I don't think I have any specific Pokemon that are good against Dark. Is it Ice maybe that's good against Dark? Let's find out. I'm not um, sure, because here's the thing. Whenever yes, I have Ice an Umbreon is. on my... 
Okay, whenever I had an Umbreon on my team, it always felt like everything was strong against it. <laughs> really? Yeah. So, I have the chart pulled up here, and mm -hmm. Ice is good against, or super effective against Dark types, um, and Dragon is too, so maybe I should have brought my Gyarados mm. with me for this. Um, yeah, my Muscle, like I don't really use that much. I think I use maybe a couple times throughout here, but yeah, maybe I should have used Gyarados. Regardless, Umbreon comes out. I use Suicune, because I do have the Ice Attack. Granted, it is a water Pokemon, but I still have that ice move. Um, it's using Aurora Beam. <laughs> I think, or excuse me, I'm using, it uses Sand Attack. So I'm trying to use Aurora Beam. I get a hit in, but it's also like messing with my um, accuracy, I suppose. Yeah. I throw out Muscle. It uses Faint Attack against me. I'm using Karate Chop. Uses Confuse Ray. I'm using Seismic Toss. I throw a full heal in. It uses Faint Attack against me twice. I use Strength. I don't think to great effect. I have to use Lemonade. And then Faint Attack again, Seismic Toss, Confuse Ray, Karate Chop, and I think that ends it. Nice. Yeah, so. like, Strength, I think, is a good move in the overworld and some gyms, but, like, endgame stuff, it's kind of not very effective. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I guess Muscle does come in clutch, apparently. Mm -hmm. uh, I throw out Vile Bloom. Or, excuse me. Karen throws out Vile Bloom. Mm -hmm. uh, I throw out Typhlosion. Because Vile Bloom strikes me as, like, a grass type? Grass poison. Okay. Typhlosion uh, uses Ember once, does half damage. Use it again. Or, pretty much half damage. Use it again, and then I use Quick Attack, and then it faints. So, that was pretty easy. So... I have a question. Mm -hmm. Were you never prompted to learn flamethrower? No, I don't think so. That's I okay. That's so strange. Cause the thing is, like, granted, I've only played this crystal a couple times, but like, having a fire starter go into the elite four and still using ember is just something i feel like the game shouldn't let you do <laughs> like that yeah because flamethrower is such a more powerful version mm -hmm. and it does the exact same thing ember would do so i i'm yeah i'm gonna check what level type Logan learns it at but that yeah that just hit me <laughs> now, yeah now that you say that i feel like i didn't um have too many like new moves from for typhlosion that i learned yeah oh so. you learned it at 60 with typhlosion oh boy <laughs> So no, I did not have flamethrower. Okay. Maybe uh, continuing onward, I will. But that's still super high, sixty. Yeah, Charizard is fifty-four apparently. That's in... still high. Let's go. I don't know if that was different in red. Flamethrower at forty-six. Okay. In red. Interesting. Yeah, sixty. That's that's high. That's high. That's high. Regardless, um, yeah, Vileplume goes down. So then Karen throws out a Gengar. I use Ember. It uses Curse. And then I use Ember, and then it faints. So Curse, always just the worst move in this game. Yeah. Like, it, thanks, it, Karen. <laughs> thanks, Karen. Yeah. Appreciate it. Honestly, like, it helps you more than anything else. Like, again, Curse, you can make it work in competitive. I don't understand why it's used in the story at yeah. all. Yeah. It's it's a sacrifice that's unneeded. Yeah. You know? Yep. Oh, well. It throws out, excuse me, Karen, not it. <laughs> Karen throws out a uh, Murkrow? Murkrow? Murkrow, okay. Murkrow. Yeah. I throw out Suicune. Uses Faint Attack. I use Aurora Beam, which does considerable damage. Does like three quarters worth of its health, which is pretty good. Oh, yeah, Ice or Dark. There you go. Yeah, exactly. Um, uses a Faint Attack, and then I finish it off with another Aurora Beam. So. Nice. We're one, two, three, four Pokemon through. Um, and then finally it throws out Houndoom. Excellent. Which I have, I'm divvying up my notes here into columns at this point. Cause I'm like, I don't want to fill up a whole page. <laughs> There's a lot right. of columns for this one. So I do remember this one being quite difficult. Dude, Houndoom. Oh, love yeah. it. 
Yeah, Hound Doom is pretty cool, and it is quite the challenge. So I throw out Quagsire, assuming water type advantage here. Mm -hmm. It uses Crunch against me, mm -hmm. which does considerable damage. Yeah, I, th I think cr Crunch is a dark type move, so I think that might. Crunch, I feel like, is strong against everything. Yeah. Like, because for Alligator, I had him learn Crunch, mm -hmm. and he tears through everything. Damn. He's named Crusha for a reason. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, I use Surf. I have to use Lemonade because I'm quite damaged at this point. Mm -hmm. um, then Crunch does three quarters of health <laughs> damage against me, so I'm like, oh boy. Um, so I throw a Graveler, and Crunch one hits Graveler, yeah. which is concerning, to say the yeah, least. Yeah, I think, now that you're saying that, I think Dark, specifically Crunch, might be very strong against Ground. Let's find out. Um, I have it pulled up here. I got Because if Quagsire is half ground and then Growler is part ground then, and Crunch like really did a number on both of them, like, mm. I got nothing on Dark against ground okay. or rock. Weird. So, so yeah, I maybe think... Maybe it's just Crunch is a super strong move, I think. I think it was that, and also Graveler at this point was somewhat under level there was like mid 30s oh true 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 okay yeah and it also like its health was below 100 so oh yeah okay. like its max hp was below 100 oh, so oh yeah okay yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so that'll do it. it uh but typhlosion comes up i use ember <laughs> i don't know why i did that i don't think it really did anything um it uses crunch. I'm using quick attack because I'm basically just trying to like use my fire like canceling out type to be like don't do fire damage against me. Um, it's using crunch, using faint attack, uh, muscle comes. No, excuse me. It's using crunch, and then I think my ty typhlosion faints at this point. So I'm like, oh boy, we're having some issues with uh, Hound Doom. Muscle comes out. <laughs> Karen uses a max potion. Oh. That stings. Really living up to her name. <laughs> and then Flame Thrower is a one hit against my muscle. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, we're having some issues here. Suicune okay. comes back out to party. I use Bubble Beam and then I throw a Lemonade to Suicune. Keep hitting me with the, them crunches. Um, Suicune faints. Even after the Lemonade. Is that the first Suicune faint so far? Possibly. It's very possible that that is. Won't be the last. Certainly yeah. won't be the last. Mm -hmm. um, I use a max revive on... I think this is the only max revive I have. And I okay. use it on Suicune. Probably good call. It seems like Suicune's been pulling a lot of weight yeah. so far. So, like, probably good call to use it on that. Definitely glad I caught Suicune. Because Suicune... Yeah, that, that helps. Honestly... Most Pokemon games gives you an opportunity to have a legendary before you face the Elite Four. Yeah. As a, if you're just doing a single player thing and you don't want to spec out a team and get the XP of the Elite Four, having a legendary in the stable helps a lot. Like mm -hmm. it really, really helps because like logistically it's kind of hard unless you do a lot of grinding to get everybody on an even playing field. Like you were trying to do that this entire playthrough and even still like like you said, Grappler's max HP was sub-100, so like having that uh, option there is pretty useful for a lot of players. Definitely. So yeah, definitely was useful. Um, uses Crunch against me again, but I use Bubble Beam, and then it finally faints. Nice. So probably the toughest Pokemon I've encountered, I would say, in the Elite Four so far, thus far. Mm -hmm. Won't be the most difficult, but it is up there. Uh, basically, at this point, I'm reviving and I'm healing all my Pokemon. And if I don't touch the footage and it's just running the whole time, you will probably see me making save states because I'm playing on an emulator. Mm -hmm. I don't use them. You'll have to take my word for <laughs> for that. I don't use them. Uh, but I'm basically just like preparing if, like, if I needed them. Um, sure. Turns out I didn't need to, but... Yeah, after each trainer, I'm, like, just saving, because, like, mine as well. Not that I want to oh, use yeah, them. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, if it's if it's between trainers, there's no shame in that. Everybody does that on the hardware, even, because they let you save between trainers. 
Oh, yeah, and like in the game, the save yeah. option. Okay. So, so if you're doing that, you didn't do anything wrong. You didn't do anything different. Not even that doing save states is wrong, but like don't yeah. feel any guilt if you did that. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, now I feel less guilt because yeah, yeah I was. It wasn't like I was doing it in battle or anything. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so. even at, even then, it's like hey, you're playing on an emulator. It's an old game. You get a pass, but like yeah. Saving in between trainers, that is a strategy. You can plan around that. I used to do that. I used to plan on like, okay, if I save here, I know I'll have X number of potions ready if I had to reload this save. So like, that is a, a strategy to brute force your way through. Okay, good to know, good For to know. sure. Turns out I didn't need them, so that's good. Um, yeah. We get to Lance. This was a big surprise. Yes. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize he'd be the final. Um, I mean, you did mention that he was an Elite Four member. Um, back in red and blue so that's cool yeah so what do you think this says about the fact that two years ago red slash jack became the champion and now mm. red slash jack is gone that's what i was wondering like presumably considering that kanto's in this takes place in the mm -hmm. same like maybe we're hold on <laughs> let me branch off here maybe we're in a pocket universe just saying <laughs> probably not though um considering like the the canon of this i would assume that this is like the progression of and we did hear that it was two years later so yeah i was confused i was a little confused and i was wondering at where where jack from blue is at this point yeah so do you think that maybe to answer your earlier question do you think lance one day was like hey jack let's fight for champ you think jack lost you think jack retired like what? What's up? Did, did the eleven-year-old retire? So is Lance the champion, or is he one of the elite four members? Wait, wait, hold on. This is your. I'm I'm looking back at it. So we had Will, mm -hmm. who was the first one. We uh -huh. had Koga, yeah, who was number two. We had Bruno, Bruno and Karen. Okay, and Karen. Okay, so that's the four. I see. Yeah, so Lance is champion. Man, good for Lance, dude. I love Lance. Lance is my favorite character I've encountered in Red and Blue. And uh, so in Crystal now at this point. Yeah. Lance kicks the teeth in of Team Rocket members. Mm -hmm. He's a vigilante by night and apparently the champion by day. So yeah. that's cool. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. This dude's all might. <laughs> Basically, yeah. So Lance is cool. Lance looks like a vampire. Um, throws out a Gyarados. That's his first Pokemon. Okay. I use Suicune and I'm throwing out Rain Dance. No, excuse me. Lance is throwing out Rain Dance with Gyarados. Okay. I use Aurora Beam to no great effect, I don't think. And then I throw out Graveler. It uses okay. Hyper, Hyper Beam. I use Rock Throw. Um... I say I write surf and oh it uses surf against me I think and then I faint so okay. I shouldn't have thrown out <laughs> Graveler because it's a water yeah that's a like is Victory Bell still out I do throw out Victory Bell okay that, why didn't you lead with I, that I don't know <laughs> I All have right. no clue um and then I throw out Sleep Powder and then I do Acid three times and then it uh yeah what what was my thinking on that one I don't know I don't know I don't know I'm looking back at my notes here. I'm like, why would I do that? Because <laughs> I know clearly that Weeping Bell has the advantage here. Excuse me, Victory Bell has the advantage here. Right. So who knows? Who knows, Christian? Sheer stupidity is an option <laughs> for not using it. Maybe just the Elite Four was so easy that your your eyes glazed over, and then at that point you're just mashing your keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quite possibly. Mm -hmm. uh, but then it throws out Dragonite. In the first Dragonite, no real issue. I use Suicune, it uses Thunder Wave, I use Aurora, Aurora Beam, which does three quarters of its health, um, it uses Hyper Beam, but who cares, because I use Aurora Beam, and then it faints. So that's fine. That's all well and good. That mm -hmm. Dragonite presents no real issues. But then it throws out it. I keep saying it. Sorry, Lance. Then Lance throws out its his second Dragonite, which presents some difficulties i will say a okay. lot of what's different about this dragonite it's just more powerful <laughs> i don't it, maybe it's using different moves maybe he throws out a dragonite first to be like 
a weaker Dragonite to, to throw me off my game. Once I see this Dragonite, I'm like, oh, this won't present any real challenge like the other one. I was wrong. This was the toughest Pokemon in the Elite Four. Damn. That I encountered. I have, like, columns and columns of notes on this thing. Um, at this point, I think I use a full restore. Uh, <laughs> and then it uses Thunder once against my Suicune. And I get it one hit, and I'm done. Yeah. So Suikin, who's been kind of carrying at a lot of points in the Elite Four, faints. That presents a huge issue. Yeah, that's devastating to your team right now. Like, yeah, I don't know if you have a counter. Do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Um, Typhlosion comes out. I'm trying to use Ember. I don't think it really does much. I revive Suikin. It uses Twister against me, and then I pull out my Victory Bell. Yeah, like, hold on. The game should not allow you to be using Ember with your starter on the champion's strongest Pokemon. <laughs> like, yeah, well, here I am. <laughs> that's an oversight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, is Ember just, like, a super underpowered move at this point? Yeah, it's the first fire move you get. It's, like, you're meant to outgrow Ember. I have Flame Wheel. Like, Flame Wheel's stronger. I feel like yeah. it's... It's like a middling fire move. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, though, I will critique the game about this. It never tells you, like... I guess it like you should assume that since you have it at first, like you should get new ones. But like the game never tells you that Ember does X amount of damage. You know, like, in my yeah, brain, so, like, mm -hmm. when I'm learning new fire-type moves, I accept them. But I haven't even learned that many yet. So, like, yeah. the game's not like, hey, you shouldn't be using Ember anymore. You know sure yeah future games i don't th i never checked with this i don't think it, the crystal did this but um future games will let you you know how it's like what move do you want to replace yeah they'll give you an accuracy stat and a power stat okay. now the power stat isn't like it will guarantee get you 97 hit points down on your opponent if you use it it's like has the potential yeah yeah okay you know so so yeah, <laughs> Typhlosion at this point is just yeah, not the, not as powered as my, um, my, not War Turtle, my, what was Blastoise. Blastoise, yeah, at the end of Blue. So, oh well. But I throw out Victory Bell. It uses Twister. I throw out Sleep Powder, and I'm like, okay, good. I got Sleep Powder on him. I can throw out my Revive Suicune, and I can just start going to town on it. Immediately wakes up immediately and i'm like oh boy it's like it's like at the end of infinity war when they get thanos like under for a little bit and then uh -huh. he wakes up and then <laughs> instantly everyone's like oh no <laughs> that's what i felt like i was like oh boy <laughs> um wakes up wakes up and then uses thunder one hit against suicune i don't even think i get an attack in because it's speed is so high so victory bell comes back out but it gets hyper beamed in one hit yikes Typhlosion comes out. It takes Thunder. At this point, I'm using Typhlosion to he heal my other Pokemon, so I'm healing Victory Bell. Thunder comes out back out against me, but I'm using Victory Bell again. Hyper Beam is used against me. I use a full restore. I guess I didn't faint from that. Okay. Twister, and then I throw Sleep Powder on him, and I effectively get Sleep, which is good. Nice. So, here's another question. Mm -hmm. Out of your hour playtime on the Elite Four. Yep. How much of that time was dedicated to just this Dragonite? Mm, let's see. So I probably... Guess. Yeah, so I think my recording time was like around an hour. Right. So <laughs> I guess the trainers can look and see what it is. I would say it's probably at least a quarter. Damn. Maybe. Mm, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm always bad at guessing time. But like, it's a... I'm looking at my notes here. It's like... A significant amount of time is used. Yeah, so out of five trainers with multiple Pokemon in each one. Yeah. About a quarter of an hour was spent on one Pokemon. That is that's wild. Maybe. Like we can go back and Sure. We'll, yeah, we'll yeah. see. But yeah, the the ones that have presented severe issues for me were Houndoom and the second um Dragonite. So yeah. But we get sleep better on him, we're using acid four times. But then it wakes up use hyper beam. One hits me. 
I throw out Quagsire. And it's using Hyper Beams, using Twister. I use Headbutt to like somewhat effect, not that great effect. But then Muscle comes out and uses Twister against Muscle. Two feints. Hmm. But finally we have a revived Suicune. Okay. And Suicune hasn't been able to get in any hits at this point. But since Muscle had... Oh wait, no, Twister. I think it's Hyper Beam was, like, still recharging at some point. So I throw out Suicune, okay. and I get an Aurora Beam in, and I finish it. That is excellent. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But then a third Dragonite comes out. <laughs> <laughs> this one is not as powered, apparently. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it uses... That's a good strategy, because it's like, here's a weaker one. And then I go in with the mindset with the second Dragonite. Oh boy, this one's going to be weak as well. Turns out it's not. It's like the most powerful Pokemon I encounter. And then the third one, I'm thinking, oh boy, this is not going to be good. But it's pretty weak. Uses Safeguard, uses Outrage. I use Aurora Beam to great effect. It does like half damage. I use Lemonade, uses Outrage a couple more times, but I use Aurora Beam to finish it off. So no real difficulty with this particular Dragonite, which is nice. Then Charizard comes up. Yeah, he does. And I'm like, what's up, Charizard? Maybe Lance played through Pokemon Red and Blue <laughs> and uh, chose Charizard. Or Charmander, I, I, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, I use, it uses Hyper Beam against me. I use Bubble Beam. uses Hyper Beam. I use Bubble Beam. And then it faints. Nice. Because I got the water type Dude. advantage. Potential hot take. I think Hyper Beam sucks. Like, mm. as a move for, like, a trainer to use, it's not good. It's, like, I, I'm honestly never really a fan of the ones that, like, you have to recover. Yeah. Um, but it like, does a significant amount of damage, though. Yeah, but, like, t so does Flamethrower, and you can get two of those in in the time it takes to do one Hyper Beam. Like, mm. I don't know. I feel like, man, Lance, given Charizard Hyper Beam, that's a choice. <laughs> I don't that, know if I agree with. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I wouldn't expect Hyper Beam from Charizard. Yeah. Hmm, that's, a, that's an odd one. And then the final Pokemon I face in this game so far is Aerodactyl? Is that correct? Yeah, Aerodactyl. Okay. I think I use this a full... This was the... Uh, okay. Remember Pewter City? The, uh, the fossil that you could see? And then yes. you got the Ember? Mm-hmm. The Ember would lead to Aerodactyl. Cool. So Lance went through the whole process, huh? Yeah, presumably. Damn. So that's cool. Yeah, so Aerodactyl's here. I use Full Restore on my Suicune. Man, now that I'm thinking about it, Suicune is just really coming in clutch for me. So appreciate you, Suicune. Um, mm -hmm. I think I use Rain Dance. I didn't specify. I would imagine I did, which powers up my um, Water-type moves. Okay. It uses Rock Slide. Presumably it's Ground or Rock type. So I think I have the advantage here. I use Bubble Beam and I write it does 9 tenths of its health. I don't know why I use that fraction. <laughs> but I'm basically saying like it does most... It get, gets rid of most of its health. Mm -hmm. uh, I threw a Lemonade on me just in case any moves came in, which it does. Smart. Hyper Beam. Does some damage against me, but I finish it off with Bubble Beam. And then I am the Pokemon champion once again. Congratulations. Thank you. This How one does it was feel? this one was a little less of a process than Gen 1. Yeah. Yeah. Like I mean I, I felt like because of my, the choice to have a similarly leveled party, that that helped a lot. Yeah. I, I think that was a very good call. I'm glad you made that call early, um, and I'm I'm glad you came to that conclusion by yourself based on your experience the first time around. Yeah. Um, and yeah, while it's not as like gripping the whole time, it's still it's still a challenge, right? Like, imagine if you didn't do that, and then you had to fight that Dragonite. Yeah, that would have presented some issues. I mean, like, I can't imagine that because in blue when i ran through it i was mostly using my bulbasaur with the occasional dug trio 
You mean Blastoise? Um, and yeah, Blastoise, and then Doug Trio, and then who else was it? Like, <laughs> I had who? Not Vaporeon. Who's the fire type? Flareon. Flareon. Yeah, I was using Flareon at some point, but like, I looked back on my party recently. Um, like, I booted up Blue, and I was looking at my levels, and they were not very leveled. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I don't think my party meant as much to me as it did this generation so in uh, blue then in, in saying, blue, so you're saying you have yeah. more of an attachment this time to this team definitely definitely like yeah. man I, I I do like my Typhlosion mm-hmm. but like Quagsire at some points when it was Wooper was, was helping me out of course I had some difficulty with Wooper but still my Graveler is probably the most underrated member of my party, but it did some serious damage for me, and it helped me out mm-hmm. a lot in, I think, my first gym. Yeah, yeah, I remember when you got the Geodude for that first gym to help. I, that was the first time where I was like, I'm going to get Pokemon to like help me out through specific areas, and yes, then afterwards is... they come out and mm-hmm. help me some more. Yeah, that is such a good takeaway if you took away anything from crystal version it's that it is be very flexible find the ones you love and after they surprise you potentially keep them around (laughs) yeah definitely um i gotta say so suicune apparently came in at the end of the day and and really helped um Mm -hmm. i would say the main takeaway for me this time i would say even more than Wooper even more than Typhlosion. My favorite Pokemon in my party right now is Victory Bell. Nice, dude. That that's a, honestly that is great to hear because that means in Gen One, Bell Sprout through Victory Bell made an impression on you because you really liked Bell Sprout before, and now it's coming back even more for Gen Two. So having that carryover, that is awesome to see because I think that. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but like that, I think is sort of where I'm at with Slowpoke. Mm. It's like it's just a Pokemon that clicked with you for some reason, and then it just—it's so reliable every time you go back. Bellsprout is and will be through future iterations of the show and of my time with Pokemon will be my Grass type. Like, no question about it. Like, I will see. always be that. If I can find it easily, which I assume I probably can, it will always be my grass type. And especially with the emotional connection of it being a shiny Pokemon, mm-hmm. I'm getting emotional just thinking about <laughs> Victory Bell, honestly, because, like, I went through the turmoil of losing the moves that I needed for my Bell Sprout early on in Crystal, and then finding the shiny. <laughs> um, Bellsprout later on which I didn't even realize was that rare and then I was like oh my man like I need to treasure this thing like I could never lose my shiny victory bell um, yeah so, so I be- so depending on what the future is if mm-hmm. we do get to emerald I'm almost positive there is a way to get because I'm assuming would be you'd be emulating again because you c- d- yeah. virtually you cannot get Pokemon emerald right now you need the really? cartridge if you want to play that game like unlike red and uh red blue yellow and gold silver crystal which you can get on the 3ds eShop through nintendo you cannot buy a digital copy of emerald you need to either have the hard copy or an emulated copy damn um but well there's also the remake on 3ds but that's a different thing mm-hmm. um for emerald if you if we go with emerald if you emulate it I think there's a process that can be done at some point in the game, not early, I don't think, it's probably about halfway, that you could transfer your shiny Victory Bell into Emerald. Okay. If any of the trainers out there know of any sort of process to do that, should I, should I say which emulator I'm using? Or is that a, that, would that not be I don't know, I can look into it, I can look into it for sure. Okay. Yeah, we can look into it, if anyone knows a way to do that. Um, let us know. Is that mm-hmm. super illegal? Should I not even be talking about emulators at this point? No, I mean, I have a copy of Crystal, physically. Yeah. That I'm spiritual. I sent to you so you could digitize it and get it on an emulator. <laughs> exactly. 
That's what happens. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is how gaming works. Um, yeah. So yeah, if anyone knows of any ways, you can let us know. But um, that is kind of crystal. <laughs> That's kind of crystal. Credits rolled. But, and I should have said this way earlier on. I've been meaning to say this. This reminds me, Kanto being in the game, reminds mm -hmm. me of spoilers, but it's a two-year-old game, Red Dead Redemption 2. Sure. When you beat it, you can go to not only West Elizabeth, where the very that's the very last part of the first Red Dead Redemption that you get to, not only there, you can also go to the, the middle part of the Red Armadillo. Dead Redemption map. Yeah, the Armadillo area, the deserty area. Yeah, but, like, nothing's there. Exactly, nothing is there. And yeah. now that I'm thinking about that, now that you also said that, like, that, how nothing was there at the end of Red Dead for that particular area, given the Game Boy's limitations, given the cartridge limitations as well, and the fact that Kanto is in here, will we will we be seeing like a similar downgrade from Gen One, or is it like you are getting the full Kanto experience in Crystal? So, from memory, I think I think it's the same, but I think some of the routes might be a little like tiny bit shorter. That could be completely false, but I know every town is there, every gym is there. A lot of the Pokemon are there. Um, there's some new Pokemon there, too. There's some new Gen 2 Pokemon that, for some reason, are in Kanto. That's dumb. Yeah. Well, like, well, like ones I haven't seen before, is what you're saying. Yes, yeah, so like, yeah. one of my favorite Pokemon from Gen 2, his name is Ursaring. Mm -hmm. He's just a giant bear. I wanted him on the team, but I did not realize I need to get to a certain cave that's only accessible after the game is beaten and in Kanto. So I was like, all right, I guess I don't have an Ursaring this time. Well, yeah. Damn. Oh, now that I'm thinking about it, mm -hmm. as soon as I learned to surf, I could have discovered Kanto. Yeah. Man, I can't. Maybe I just didn't go back to New Bark Town. Mm -hmm. But are you surprised that I didn't learn about that earlier? I mean, the option was there, but I don't think you had a reason ever to go back there unless you had to get money from your mom, which I don't think you needed. I think maybe I went back once or twice but i don't think i put two and two together to sure. ever like look at the water and be like oh, i could surf there now um mm -hmm. so yeah that's that's interesting that i'm kind of glad it worked out that way because like it's a sort of natural progression like if i went there earlier on in the game i wouldn't have been able to progress through to kanto because you need to go through um the elite four and get credits to roll essentially right so so but yeah that is the first half <laughs> of pokemon crystal apparently no let's let's be real about it you beat pokemon crystal mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there's just a post game now yeah uh, it's a whole that's a that's a big post game yeah i'm not it is i'm not i may seem like su suspect of that mostly because i was not expecting there to be literally eight more gyms yeah at the end of this um mm -hmm. and sort of my eagerness to get to emerald is also playing into that as well but it's mm -hmm. i it will be interesting to see kanto through a different perspective and with a different party mm -hmm. uh if we want a fun little easter egg for this show mm -hmm. as the weeks have been going on um every time you get a badge i show the banner where like a nice blue velvet uh display case for every badge you get nice as the weeks have been going on, I've been making the badges smaller and smaller. So, like, it's like, <laughs> hey, there's a lot of space there for just eight badges. <laughs> so, like... It's like the, I was um, trying to see. See if I noticed. I did not notice. Yeah. That's a good call. I was going to say, it reminds me of when PlayStation had that Mark Cerny conference and they had space <laughs> yeah. beneath the graphic for PS3, PS2, PS1 backwards compatibility. Mm -hmm. Except this one apparently is more fulfilling than that graphic. <laughs> yeah. So that's nice. Um, well, that is like the majority of Pokemon Crystal. Done and complete. Yeah. On, listen, though. On your GG, you can say you beat Pokemon Crystal now because you beat Pokemon Crystal. You got through the main thing of that game. Sweet. Okay. I will do that. I will do that. So, uh, yeah. Overall, um, if you had to... I know you just compared your party, but... And we could just do a full other episode just about comparisons, but do you think... Yeah. 
compared to Gen 1, uh, do you think this is better or same level? A little underwhelming, like, where mm. you at there? Okay. I, <laughs> it's all of those things, really. But I think my nostalgia, because I do have nostalgia for Blue, because it is my first Pokemon game. I think yes. that elevates that to be my favorite of the two. Mm-hmm. But even saying that, I I think I might have enjoyed the experience with Crystal a little bit more. Sure. Less Be- questions. F- yeah, fewer questions. And then there was also me knowing how to play Pokemon because I didn't know how to play Pokemon at first. I was throwing Pokeballs at trainers' <laughs> Pokemon. Yeah. Um, you know, so like with that in mind, I was able to sort of play the game a little bit in, with more tactics than I had from Gen 1. So that was nice. Yeah. And to have like a full fledged party that I was sw- sw- like swapping between, depending on mm-hmm. which Pokemon I was facing, was nice. I did appreciate that. I'm curious why this game, I don't know, 20 years later or whatever it is, is often people's favorite because i've seen that flying around yeah why is that the case Um, because like you were mentioning me sort of feeling feeling a little underwhelmed because i do like as a sequel to gen one it kind of just feels like more of the same i do appreciate how it plays better in terms of if i have to cut a tree i can do that with like two clicks instead of going through my party same with surf and stuff like that so like there are small improvements but i and the story is essentially the same game yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I'm curious why. Maybe you can have some insight into this. Why people think that this is like the superior Pokemon? So I think it's just nostalgia. I think it is the people who were there for Red and Blue. I'm sure the there was hype for Gold, Silver, and eventually Crystal, mm-hmm. where the hype probably made Gen One look worse in comparison, and then. The fact that Gen 1 is still in here, um, I think people probably have it from that mindset of being a child at the time of release where it was like, man, this is everything I could have wanted. But I I think what's interesting with you is you didn't have that, right? You played Red and Blue as a 22-year-old in the year 2019, and then... And you, like, enjoyed it for the most part. And then a year later, you played the sequel, essentially and it's underwhelming in a way. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that just speaks to the fact that there are certain games that despite the love around them, they don't age well. I I think that's genuinely it. I I think Crystal makes some good changes that stick around in the series, but end of the day, I think one made more of a statement for red and blue right like the two was like a bit more of a refinement and i think what anger all said at the top of this and what we kind of all agree on the th- three of us like it feels like this is the definitive version of gen one in a way because it's just still so present you know yeah yeah and I... go for it i was just gonna add on that i think emerald and gen three as a whole and then platinum and gen four as a whole i think blow gen 2 out of the water okay that's what i was gonna ask i was gonna ask are we gonna see some major revisions with gen 3 and apparently gen 4 so but what what, i guess what you were saying yes we did so from gen 2 to gen 3 we're getting a beefy episode by the way at this time i have a lot of questions Uh, so okay sure um so sorry or you're welcome for that listeners um from Gen 2 to Gen 3, what systems are we upgrading to? So the original, we're on the original Game Boy or Game Boy Color yes. right now. Crystal um, was only Game Boy Color, I believe. So Okay. But Gold and Silver were Game Boy. Yes. Okay, and what do we get with Emerald? Or Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald? So, yeah, okay. So let me just add on as well. Uh, Game Boy Color does, is not a hardware jump. It's the color palette, that's it. So... Mm-hmm. Essentially, this was a Game Boy game. Uh, game Boy, I think, came out in 96 or 94. Uh, I don't remember. But this is going from the Game Boy to the Game Boy Advance, which is the either 
one that looks like a tiny little rectangle, or it's the first clamshell flip design thing. I had um, the uh, purple rectangle one. Okay, so yeah, it's that <laughs> hardware. So it's a okay. buff. Yeah. It is getting like at least six years worth of technology. That's Dang. a significant jump. Wow. That's exciting. Um, maybe I can break out. I have my Pokemon, like, or excuse me, I have my uh, Game Boy Advance, like, with me. And then I can okay. pull it out maybe at one of the episodes and show you. Yeah. I did break it out recently, <laughs> and I had left some batteries in there since when I was Ooh. five. And some white goop from that came out, so. Yeah, that's a little, uh, that's a little upsetting. I shouldn't have done that. Um, so that thing's probably toast. <laughs> Not well, that hey, I, I um, playing, but... I found my Wii recently, mm -hmm. and I had some double A's in my Wii remote. I was able to clean that, no problem. Oh, okay. So. But well, granted, that was like three years, not like 20. Yeah, literally the whole, my whole lifespan, essentially. Yeah. But yeah, that is pretty much Pokemon Crystal. Now, what should we do for an art submission, do you think? Um, uh, honestly... Any one of the champion team. Mm. I say Dragonite because that caused me some severe issue. Maybe like yeah, like Swole Dragonite. Yeah, Swole Swole Dragonite or um, Lance or something along those lines, or maybe a combination. I'm gonna do Dragonite. Um, so that's where I'm heading. If someone if someone wants to do something along those lines from the trainers out there, you are more than welcome. And also, this is just a framework, as we always say. You can do whatever you of want. Of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, that is... It's not it for Pokemon Crystal, because we will be going back to it next episode, mm -hmm. and then presumably episodes after that. But that is the main beefiness of Pokemon Crystal. So, yeah. Yeah, it's been a fun ride. Thank you all for joining us. Christian, do you have any um, sort of closing thoughts on the main beef of Pokemon Crystal? Um, not really. I, I think in summation, still definitely not my favorite, not my top three uh, at, at Pokemon games. Like, Emerald might be the best, maybe. But Platinum, I think, is my favorite. And then Red is right beneath both of them. Nice. Um, Crystal is... Crystal's a good game. It's a good game. It's a, not a great new Pokemon generation. It's not exciting. Um... And yeah, like what Jack said, we're very flexible. Uh, everybody in either the live premiere or in the comments, or if you just listen to the show, if you have input on what you want to see us do next in terms of... Because look at it this way. I think we're at a stage right now where we are a Pokemon that can evolve with a stone at this point. Mm -hmm. You know, like we went through the first evolution... And now it's like, hey, it's just a matter of, like, once we pull that trigger, it's there. We're good, <laughs> you know? So let us know what you want to see. Uh, we will talk about it. We'll figure something out. But Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, that's that's really great to say. Um, I think sort of closing thoughts for me, I, I'm kind of with you there on this wasn't the the sequel I was sort of hoping for. I think the jump to color was nice. Um, yep. But other than that, it wasn't any sort of leap in the direction I was thinking, and it was more of the same which wasn't a bad thing it was nice to sort of have that run through again but wasn't blown away by anything and there were a few disappointments along the way um ruins mm -hmm. of alf and sort of side objectives that didn't really lead anywhere that i didn't appreciate um really at all but yeah it was it was nice to play through and to sort of approach pokemon in a different way instead of just focusing on my starter um putting more attention to the pokemon on my team so that was nice mm -hmm. um yeah, and yeah, to echo what Christian said, your feedback is definitely crucial to the the future of this show. So, if if everyone in the comments next week is like, or for this episode is like, don't even play uh, Crystal anymore. Like, we want to see you do Emerald. We're totally fine to do that. Maybe we'll do. Yeah, we'll definitely do like an in between episode of maybe me hopping around in Kanto for a little bit. Um, yeah, and then if you want us to just go all the way through Kanto, we'll totally do that. Like, the the future is in your hands. So. We're interested to see what you have to say. Definitely sound off in the comments because we will do whatever you guys want, honestly. We'll, if you want us to head right, right to Emerald, we'll do that. If you want us to spend a lot more time at Crystal, we will also do that. But until then, Christian, where can people find you? 
uh, Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch at Chris N. Buckley, as well as here, youtube.com slash joyclicks, uh, audio services. We have a ton of podcasts. Jack and I do this show. We also do Excelsior, the world's number one Marvel's Avengers podcast. So a new episode going up Saturday. And yeah, uh, my first spawn, whatever it continues as, will continue most likely dropping on Mondays, live premieres, be there in the chat, hang out, talk about the game with us. So there you go. Cool. Yeah, uh, you can find me on social media at Fascinated Jack. Uh, echo what Christian said, we got Marvel's Excelsior. You can find that on Saturdays every week. It's a great time. If you like that Marvel's Avengers game from Square Enix and Crystal Dynamics, it's a fun time. Christian and I just gush about that, essentially, but also complain about all the problems that it has. Cause... Oh, I got some complaints for this episode, man. <laughs> yeah, we encountered some difficulties when we played together, didn't we? Yeah. So maybe, you'll, maybe we'll talk about that next episode. But until then, and until the continuation of this series, we'll catch you later.